Tata, he joined IT for Change, which right. had set up in 2000. So IT for Change also was set up in the same year the Razim Pindi Foundation was set up. But I thought it's good to get experience in an established organization so that one learns the tricks of the trade. IT for Change during uh, in, in two, 2000 was the year of the dot com boom and uh, uh, lots of uh, dot coms were set up and that's why you know we call it the year of the dot com boom. There was also the year of the Y two K boom. You know in India. A lot of people got into working on software to make it uh, century-proof because you know the year 1999 was becoming 2000 and people feared that applications would not work. So at that time, when everybody was talking about technology, that was the first time when technology was a household word, and everybody was saying technology is changing society, technology is changing the world. We are still saying that, but we started saying it in 2000. A group of us got together and felt that technology, what it is doing for business. the same thing it cannot do for social sector the social sector application of technology has to be unique to the challenges and problems of the social sector space so i was only technology person in that group there were other people who were working in development some working in gender some working in governance reform mm-hmm. some working in uh, labor and worker issues so we all got together and said let's start this ngo because this and we need an ngo which is going to look at technology from a social sector perspective not necessarily the way it's popularly uh, you know it's popular in the world which is in the business sector form that's how it started and of course any ngo when it starts it's not going to be um, from day one unless you have like a nazim ramji foundation that somebody is supporting it from day one for an ngo it's really a struggle to find uh, uh, specific projects and purpose in what it does so we our first big project was in mysore where the government of india gave us a grant to explore how community knowledge centers now of course these are very common and all over the uh, country we have these knowledge centers right but i'm talking about in 2004 when this was still a very new area so we did a two year program on how knowledge centers can be set up in rural areas and how they can support rural development so that was the first big project that we got in 2004 after that the journey has been continuing all technologies have a positive side and a negative side so that's important to understand and uh, particularly in the context that many people seem to believe that when you say technology it means good technology can only do good things and you therefore you should keep putting technology anywhere and everywhere but ready for change we don't believe that because we are uh, our research also says that technology can be quite dangerous it can be quite harmful particularly for women the cyber space can be extremely dangerous space and you know um, i am on twitter and women who are on twitter politician women politicians who are on twitter they get trolled like anything so anybody who is a feminist and who is on twitter faces enormous uh, violence it is violence in a way it's cyber violence it's not physical violence but the mental trauma is terrible and that's technology enabled you know you can be trolled by anybody in the world so we are very very keen that we need to design technology in a way that it supports the uh, marginalized it supports the weaker section that supports the poor and the purpose of education also is to liberate the marginalized groups education has always been uh, you know a, something that the privileged groups have enjoyed forever and it's only the last 30 40 years that government of india has taken up you know the previous national policy in 1986 really gave a thrust to universal education and the 2020 policy also continues on that so yeah. for us given that as a mandate we strongly believe that technology should be used to empower teachers in the education space so we are there are many people who want to deliver apps and give apps to young people and imagine that the learning will happen but given my own work in education i know that education is meaningful only when there's a good teacher supporting that process and no technology can replace a teacher so our work in the education space has really been and the nep also says that it says that use technology for teacher empowerment which means two things one is teacher development so that teachers acquire competencies to use technology fruitfully so that is one level which is the competency part the other is the agency part so teachers should have the flexibility and autonomy to decide how to use technology in the ways that is relevant for them otherwise what happens is we have centralized technology programs and there will be some dictate coming from the top saying technology should be used in this way everybody should download a diksha app everybody should use a diksha and these kind of centralized designs will not work for everybody what will work for a teacher in bihar is not going to work for a teacher in kerala what's going to work in punjab won't work in tamil nadu so unless we are able to decentralize these designs 
and allow teachers and schools to make decisions which technology can enable technology is not that it's only going to support centralization technology can actually allow peer networks to emerge so it right. for change work has been teacher empowerment teacher profession development teacher networks so this is what i was saying is what will be in the focus of it for change work also actually the pandemic itself is a issue, very serious issue as far as uh, education and equity in education is concerned uh, just in the afternoon i had been to a government high school in bangalore so i'm not even talking about rural areas and Right. The teachers are really apprehensive that many of the students are going to drop out of school this year. So, you know, middle class families, our children have been attending online classes pretty much throughout the pandemic. Uh, right. So their education has not been affected. But if you look at the government system, I would say ninety percent of children going to government schools or and government colleges have not received any education in the last eight months. When you are young, the chances that you will forget what you learned eight months before is extremely high. in the meantime young girls are being pressured into marriage boys and girls are getting into child labor they are earning some small amounts of money and so there's a real fear that there will be a learning loss and more than that there will even be an out of school dropout situation now so to bridge this gap i think there is no easy solution see teacher development will work but what are the devices are not there what if connectivity is not there what infrastructure is not there now this cannot be left to the private sector alone to invest in and make it happen because education is not a business you are not going to be able to make money out of selling hardware or selling connectivity to schools in remote poor, poor rural areas of course there will be elite schools in urban areas where you know it's possible that, uh, that you can have it as a business proposition so i think what kerala has done is uh, you know kerala in many ways is a role model for the country they have invested very hugely in setting up infrastructure and connectivity across the entire state kerala is a small state i agree but kerala is hilly kerala has got forests so they have the challenges of terrain like others have the only difference is they have decided to invest money in making the infrastructure available once the infrastructure is available teacher development is possible teacher networks are possible what rural urban devil you are talking about the networks of teachers is the best way to bridge it so if rural teachers and urban teachers are connected private school teachers and government school teachers are connected high school teachers and primary school teachers are connected teachers are connected across subject across medium then the kind of learning possibilities that we will see we will make sure that the best of the learning possibilities in one place the ideas and knowledge about that is available everywhere and i think technology can play the role of a connector and the connector will enable the bridging of the divide but that requires huge investment the language has now become the language of inclusive education so earlier we used to use the phrase children with special needs but when we say inclusive education it's not only uh, when we say special needs we often think of uh, children with you know physical disabilities or you know visual impairment or hearing impairment so we use the phrase special needs but what we are increasingly recognizing is that in a class you will have children who do not have any visual impairment no physical disability but yeah. they come from a family which has not been to a school ever yeah. so that is also a kind of a disability or there is a kind of a disadvantage not a dis- disability but a disadvantage so increasingly when we say inclusive we yeah. are saying that irrespective of your background if you are able to get the learning opportunity that will help you progress in your own you know ability to develop yourself then it's inclusive so right. even if there is a child which is not able to speak the language with the medium of instruction is or you know as a, a a girl sibling who is having difficulties at home so inclusive education goes beyond the uh, only children with special needs now with special needs there are specific tools available so for example for visually impaired children there are voice to uh, text to voice readers so uh, there are text to voice voice to text readers there are different kind of engines that are available for helping the transcending of specific disabilities but in terms of a larger inclusive environment how digital technologies help and this is what our work has also focused on is right. to create additional pedagogical resources for teachers so teacher traditionally has certain content and certain pedagogical approaches which may be meeting 30% of the class population Right. but digital technologies can allow the teacher to change increase the pedagogical repertoire right. increase the content available so from chalk and talk you have gone on to videos you have gone on to animations simulations 
so when the pedagogical and the content repertoire of the teacher increases the teacher is able to meet the requirements of larger and larger students right. also technology can support peer support opportunities in the classroom so group work project work collaborative work when technologies are used to support these kind of approaches then we find that children are learning from children also and therefore a much more inclusive environment can be built technology has a role here but it has to be properly devised so one important principle for example in the indian context is we need to promote free and open source software because for example we are talking about visually impaired children right now there is a proprietary software called jaws now the jaws license is so expensive that if you are blind and poor you don't have a chance you are blind and rich you are okay you know we we cannot have money availability as a factor to determine whether a blind child will get education or not but there are there's a free and open source equivalent for jaws now governments and schools are to consciously adopt and promote free and open source software so that any tool that's available for a child can be available for all children and that is also an aspect of inclusion yeah now with pandemic uh, digital technologies have become much more common place and you know uh, maybe a year back we were wondering how will we reach technology everywhere and how will we make sure teachers embrace technology right. we find that those questions are not really the questions now teachers want to embrace technology because they realize that without technology in a school shut down situation you can't reach children at all right. so but the challenges of workable models still exist so the private uh, schools the middle class those uh, groups needs are taken care of but that may be 20% or 20% of the population of this country where digital technology can work for everybody now that is something we have been doing all along but in the pandemic for example we have been offering online courses using free and open platforms so uh you know we don't use zoom which we are using now for this call we don't use zoom we don't use google meet we don't use any of the proprietary tools that all of us are familiar with we right. used to create teachers groups on whatsapp but now because whatsapp is changing its privacy policies we are moving to signal so instead of uh, a tool like zoom or a google meet we use a tool called big blue button big blue button is free and open so any school or any school system can install it on their own servers the advantage right. of big blue button is because the source code is open you can be sure that not only there's license fee issues are not there but data theft and data uh, surveillance those kind of challenges will not be there because imagine all the data of this country being sucked by google or facebook or zoom into america you know there is a huge loss in terms of national sovereignty and national resources so therefore we want to look at models where there is public investment on the hardware and connectivity there is open source in terms of uh, 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 software being available freely for people to share, and our work has always focused on creating of open content. So, right. using free software to create free content has been an important focus area for work, where we make teachers to create content. So, these if the public investment on hardware and connectivity is complemented by free software and open content, we feel that the possibility of reaching it out to as many universally is uh, higher. So, that is what is going to be our focus over the next few years to make sure that. digital technologies online education is not something for the privileged but it is going to work for everybody and then the teacher decides when to use it and when not to use it so that also doesn't become another thing forced on the teacher 